my greetings to everyone present here. In the other hall, as indicated by Vivek, and everyone who is on virtual mode. Very, very good afternoon, according to the watch. I am grateful to the Honorable Chief Minister, Shivraj Johan, because the day I took oath of office of Vice President of India, Honorable Chief Minister called me that after my home state, I must visit Madhya Pradesh. I have fulfilled the promise. <laughs> it was catalyzed by Subraji and Vivek. <laughs> Honorable Governor of Madhya Pradesh, Sri Mangubhai Patelji, Honorable Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, Honorable Justice Sanjay Krishan Kaur, Judge of the Supreme Court, Honorable Justice J.K. Marshall Ji, Judge Supreme Court, Honorable Justice Ravi Malimath, Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh High Court, retired judges of this court, sitting judges of this court, Chief Justice Calcutta High Court, Sri Vastwaji, Chairman AFT Manansar, Honorable Members of Parliament, and I can tell you, if you find me somewhat low in spirit, it is on account of three members of Rajya Sabha being present here. <laughs> Vivek, Rajiv Shukla, and Kartikeya Sharma. The session will start in November. I do hope they will get a lot of inspiration from erudite, scholarly, addressed by Justice Cole. But a big relief to me that Jabulpur MP, Rakesh Singh, a senior parliamentarian, he is present here and he is in the Lok Sabha. Vivek Chaudhary Ji, Chairman Bar Council, members of the Bar Council, senior advocates, members of the Bar, and distinguished audience. I need to congratulate, as you all will, Justice Cole for rendering a memorable discourse on one of iconic personalities in our judicial system. His Lordship has vindicated in full authenticity his sublimity of approach to critical issues. I am beholden to him. I do not know for what reason when people talk rationally, it is said they are talking out of the box. I strongly support his thought process. His thought process emanates out of firm conviction and a great rational. And this for me is take home from this very important occasion. His Lordship has traversed all facets pertaining to late Justice J.S. Verma. And I would not take your time on that. For two reasons. One, making a demand on your time is unreasonable. And secondly, I will not be able to measure up to his level. I'm extremely humbled at this opportunity and the kind words that have been said about me. I'm grateful my wife is not here and my son-in-law and daughter made their absence to see I'm comfortable, but they would not agree. 
I would indicate some facets of Justice Verma for the reason that while he was Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court from 86 to 89, I happened to be very young president of the bar, around, 80, around 36, and I was in the bar council. And the relationship between the bar and the Chief Justice is not always very congenial, sir, for a variety of reasons. <laughs> because a very rational approach of judges normally does not go down well with the bar. And the Honorable Chief Justice here has agreed, which is a very healthy, wholesome endorsement and energizing me. But I can tell you, that was the most difficult period of Rajasthan High Court and Justice Verma enforced sublimity, transparency, and accountability. His Lordship found a way out that original petitions will be handled by two judges. Something that was criticized, but within their hearts, every lawyer agreed that was the only solution at that point of time. For another good reason, I am beholden to late Justice J.S. Verma. I was arguing a case before him challenging Section 32 of the FDS Act that it is in violation, gross violation of Article 21. What a dying man had said can decide the fate of a living man. It was based, the challenge was based, premised on a report of a law commission in a European country. I was young, perhaps he was impressed and in open court, he said, would you like to be senior? And the bench was, sir, Justice Verma, Justice Kasriwal, Justice Suresh Agrawal, all came to the Supreme Court. My dear friends, I had no idea what a senior was. So I indicated to the Honorable Chief Justice, the Honorable Chief Justice may be indulgent to give me a day's time to ponder over. His response matched my community response. Then you don't deserve to be one. <laughs> and promptly I responded, make me one right now. That is how I became, I was designated a senior advocate. When the file moved, sir, it was through that process. The junior, junior most judge, happened to be a session judge in one of the districts. So he had serious reservation on my being designated a senior advocate. Serious. Because I had argued two appeals. His conviction, the conviction which he recorded was upset. The accused were acquitted. And lordships of the High Court made some observations also. I had no role in that. But he felt bad at the observations. So after I was designated senior and Justice J.S. Verma was appointed as judge of the Supreme Court, I also moved to the Supreme Court and the, what is they call, sir, Lutian Delhi, on being elected member of parliament. Then he revealed to me that he told the junior most judge, it is not the lawyer's fault at never, ever. Judges have their own approach. So for this reason also, I am greatly beholden to the late man. But he will be remembered ever by the country and judicial fraternity for what he has done. His judgments have impacted society in an exceptional manner and well regarded. One of the judgments on which His Lordship Justice Cole has reflected at great depth, I would not dilate much on that except saying that in Vishakha, a case originating from Rajasthan, he judicially structured the mechanism for adequately providing for specific protection to women
from sexual harassment in workplace. I remember that judgment for a very different reason. And that particular premise is not in much limelight. And that, according to me, is the basis on which Justice Cole has just now made a very, very momentous reflection. And that was, in the judgment Justice Verma reflected, I quote, these directions would be binding and enforceable in law until suitable legislation is enacted to occupy the field and court. Look at his wisdom, knowledge. Look at his respect for constitutional institutions. He yield to the expedient situation, found a solution and resolution through a judicial order, but did not permit the order to graduate to an incursion in the domain of legislature that alone has competence to frame law. This is an instance of scrupulous adherence to doctrine of separation of powers, which I can say contemporaneously is under some strain. Our Shastras say, Dharma Rakshati Rakshita, the law protects us if we preserve its sanctity. I find this nectar of democracy. I find it non-compromising. There is no way out except to adhere to it. Presently, we need to revisit the situation to see that this wholesome principle is practiced by all. Adherence to constitutional prescriptions by all institutions is not optional. If democracy has to function, constitution has to function, all institutions under the constitution are required to keep within their bounds. Democracy can be best nurtured. It can blossom. It can impart, impart healthy impact societally and for welfare of the people if constitutional institutions are in sync with each other. They confine their actions to the limits set by the constitution and to serve the larger public interest they are in sync with each other. Sir, I would indicate any transgression by any constitutional institution, however refined, however subtle, however non invasive, creates a ripple that becomes unfortunately a tsunami. We have seen recently innocent observation of the court. And mind you, courts, judges, sit from 10.30 to 4 o'clock. An observation, which is no more than a small ripple, is put in high decibel by media and creating all kinds of situations that certainly can't be called as wholesome. I would therefore strongly urge and appeal the time now has come when a fresh look be taken so that all institutions, legislature, executive, and judiciary, confine to the role prescribed for them by the Constitution. This will be good for the institutions. This will be good for the country. This will help rule of law prevail rather than there being law by any one of these institutions. 
or any other authority. I should not be misunderstood that I am focusing on one institution. All three institutions are on the same page. All three institutions, that is, legislature and executive and also judiciary, have to think within. And I am sure those at the helm of affairs will bestow attention on this very critical aspect so that our country, which is on the rise, continues in that journey. Sir, I am addressing Justice Cole in particular after being enthused, motivated, inspired by your discourse. We are passing through a phase, sir, where secrets are always open secrets. A secret in the executive at any level, a secret in the judiciary at any level, a secret in any other format is an open secret. And that open secret no one is prepared to discuss. That perhaps is travesty, I would say not of justice, but of our entire system. Gone are the times when things could be decided behind the curtain and nobody would ever come to know it. The very concept of declassification of documents after some decades is irrelevant today. I would therefore urge transparency and accountability are non-negotiable. It is a tough call. It will be very difficult for any one of us to assert there is adherence to the sublime, non-negotiable principle stand in high echelons of authority and power. I recall I had a chance meeting with a celebrated judge of the U.S. Supreme Court, who is no more, Justice Scalia, and had the occasion to go through one of his addresses in a university. And he was reflecting on power of judicial review. And he was reflecting that European courts have no idea the power of judicial review the American Supreme Court enjoys. I made an observation, sir. I'm picking up carriers from your address. He was not aware about Indian Supreme Court. We have enormous power of judicial review. Time has come for us to think. U.S. Supreme Court initially started with eight judges. Quickly they learned the number should be odd. So they made it nine. It's still they are nine. They don't sit in benches. They sit as one court. And they are happy with the number. When I became a minister in 89 to 91 period, I went to a place in Parliament House where sir, first federal court used to sit and then Supreme Court used to sit. So I directed someone, let me know how could you accommodate the litigants and lawyers in this small room. Because in Supreme Court, we now see, we, are, we hardly have any space in the corridor. And my lords, Roste would indicate what happens. And I was amazed to learn. There were eight judges initially, sir. They used to sit twice a day, twice, twice a week, and for half day. And if we come across some of eight judge bench decisions, it is during that period. Now, the thought process which has been slightly hinted by Justice Court, very slightly, in a subtle manner, needs to be taken further. 
At independence, we were 36 crore, now we are 136. I strongly believe, I strongly believe as a tribute to democratic assents and requirement that will of the people expressed through their representatives, that is the parliament, must occupy primacy. A legislation that emanates The role is not confined only to members of parliament. They are representatives. I would not at this moment venture into another area that very distinguished members of the Constituent Assembly debated and deliberated all aspects of constitution. But the composition of the Constituent Assembly may have to be gone into. But I have no doubt I can say so. Presently, our parliament is far more representative than at any time in its history. People are participating vigorously in the election process. Now, if, if the country of 136 crore people electing their representatives through a representative mechanism which is very transparent, globally acknowledged, it must have do it is. That, sir, is my humble request. Because only a giant can raise the issue. We have won on the dice. At a time I'm reflecting because it has come in media. His Lordship has always maintained restraint in court and outside. I have never seen him worked up. I have appeared before him on a number of occasions. And even if a judgment is reversed by the higher court, the composer was as it is. Sir, there must be something in you for the great nation, Bharat, that you could not help yourself but write that letter. I hope things are affirmatively catalyzed so that we come to a situation where respect for the people at large and there is only one mechanism to do it and that is through the representatives. I would not have departed from my script and I would have confined totally to a different level. But as a citizen of this country, under oath of the Constitution, and inspired by a thought process indicated a while ago, I thought it will be unfair for me, my conscience will not permit it, that I do not lend a small strength to the thought process that has emanated a while ago. Sir, there is a requirement of a stock taking, and that is required. A spinally strong, fair, independent justice system is the safest guarantee for blossoming and flourishing of democratic values. And I can indicate to the Honorable Chief Minister for the democracy, sir, it is. But sometimes judgments can be uncomfortable. And no one knows more than you with your huge experience and commitment to help the people at large. And therefore, what you indicated, and which has been responded very rationally by Justice Cole, if you conclude at the end of the day, you both are on the same page. And that is the strength when we think wholesomely for the nation and the country. No one should forget, none is above the law. Whatever background you may have, whatever position you may hold, the moment anyone thinks he is above the law, that is the greatest disrespect 
to rule of law and democratic values. People in high authority, wherever they are, need to remind themselves day in and day out that law is about them. And the only mechanism that enforces law is judiciary. So criticism that emanates for judges pains me terribly. For a simple reason, judges can't defend themselves in public domain. I was governor of West Bengal for three years. I've seen it myself. There has been a reflection by the former Chief Justice of India that swift action should be taken against those who take on judges, target individual judges. Action was taken, but in isolation. Members of the bar and the media have to come forward to take cudgels with everyone concerned so that our judiciary, which evokes, I can say, without, I, I think, without fear of any contradiction, evokes instant public response. That is why a judicial commission evokes confidence, unlike a non judicial commission. I am sure members of the bar, legal fraternity, and media in particular will become foot soldiers to defend the judges when they are targeted and that will be their great service to the country at large. I will end by indicating that Justice Verma has laid a foundation by his work, action, judgments and demeanor that can be role model for all young lawyers, all senior professionals and members in the judiciary. I am grateful once again, first to the Honorable Chief Minister, because I had undertaken to him that outside my home state, the state of Madhya Pradesh will be the first state I will visit. I am grateful. I am grateful to Subhraji and Vivek so that they could catalyze it. When they walked into my office, I did not take sir even a second because Shivraji ka chehra mere saamne ekdam a gaya. Or Shivraji soft hai, par andar se bhot sakt hai. ये अपनी बात भूलते नहीं है मैंने वादा कर लिया और कहीं और चला जाऊंगा ये बात वो कभी नहीं कहेंगे पर मुझे हमेशा डर लगता रहेगा कि पता नहीं कब कह देंगे तो ये मौका शुभरा जी और विवेक ने आपसे छीन लिया है आई एम श्योर विवेक विल बी फेयर टू यू इन फ्यूचर Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, so I am gratified to the legal fraternity in particular for being here in such a large number and outside, if I believe Vivek. Because uh, Vivek has high credibility except that he is a member of Rajya Sabha. So that he along with uh, Kartike and uh, Raji Shukla will have to demonstrate and I will report to the people on the dais any transgressions taking place. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you.